In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As you just heard in our gospel lesson, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light. The Greek word, martyria, means witness. So I guess technically, this could have been written to say, he came as a martyria, a martyr, to testify to the light. According to the Oxford Learner's Dictionary, a witness is a person who sees something happen and is able to describe it to other people. John was called, equipped, and sent by God to be a mighty witness to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God. Being a witness is an important responsibility. Others rely on the testimony of witnesses to be true so that they can make important decisions, often with lasting consequences. You may not think of a martyr being a witness, and yet in its original usage, that is exactly what it meant. Over time, and as more and more people were killed or lost their faith, lost their lives because of their faith, the word martyr evolved into our current understanding, dis distinguishing it as a special category of witness. Today, we understand a martyr to be a person who has lost his or her life because of his or her beliefs, usually religious beliefs. There are no shortage of stories about first and second century Christians who were martyred in places as the Roman Colosseum or innocent people being crucified on crosses with their bodies soaked in oil and then set on fire to serve as human torches used to provide lighting along Roman roadways. Christian believers or followers of the way were fed to the lions, beaten, whipped, sawed in half, put to death by the sword, ostracized, and tortured in prisons. Christians are no strangers to martyrdom. By the second century after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the persecution and martyrdom of Christians was rampant. An early church father named Tertullian called this out, writing that the blood of the Christians is the source of new life. Tertullian also said, the blood of Christians is seed, which Augustine of Hippo made famous in a sermon saying, the earth has been filled with the blood of the martyrs as with seed, and from that seed have sprung the crops of the church. John the Baptist was murdered for his witness and faith. Ten of the original apostles, as well as countless Christians in every century since, have been killed or suffered loss because of their beliefs. There has been no shortage of Christian martyrs, people who remained faithful in the face of danger. Sadly, we know that reality continues even in our day and in our generation. As Christians, we are all called to be witnesses of our faith. We are to tell others about the good news of Jesus Christ and witness to the redeeming act of love Jesus accomplished on the cross. During these final two weeks of Advent, how might you use this as a special time when opportunities present themselves to witness to your faith as part of your Christmas preparations? God calls us every day to be witnesses to our faith. We, too, are called to do what John the Baptist did. We are called to point people to Jesus, to let the world know that Jesus is the light of the world, that we are to do our part in making straight the way of the Lord. There's a great irony here. While many of us hope that we would have 
the kind of courage it would take to die for Christ and our faith if the situation presented itself. But what about having the kind of love and courage it takes to invite family members, neighbors, or even co-workers to church or to tell them about what Jesus has meant in your life? Let me offer a fairly simple test to consider. To what degree are you shy about pausing for a moment and bowing your head in a restaurant in order to offer grace before a meal? Offering a blessing before meals is a daily opportunity to give God thanks for our daily bread and our many blessings. Offering a blessing before meals, as simple as it sounds, can be a genuine opportunity to publicly witness to your faith. We live in a country where prayer has been removed from many public venues. It's not uncommon to hear stories of people who muster the courage to talk about Jesus and their faith, only to be negatively labeled and maybe even ostracized by family, friends, and other groups. Happy Holidays has essentially replaced Merry Christmas in the public square and marketplace. However, among and between Christians, the reason for the season remains and always will be to celebrate the birth of Jesus with the message unequivocally being Merry Christmas. Please don't understand me, misunderstand me. I'm not saying Christians should be dismissive or disrespectful to the faith others hold dear. What I am saying is that we can honor the faith of others without forfeiting our own faith. The truth is, we never know who that one person might be whose life can literally be saved by coming to know the hope and love of Jesus Christ. And we might be that one person that God has placed in that person's path to share that message. We are all called to be martyrs, not in the sense of dying for our faith, but in the original sense of being a witness for our faith. There's a true story that was recorded in the book, Sources of Strength by former President Jimmy Carter. He writes about an experience he had when he was President of the United States. He was invited to speak at the Southern Baptist Convention that had over 17,000 delegates. There were three men invited to speak for five minutes each. President Carter, Billy Graham, and a truck driver. Billy Graham spoke first, and as usual, he gave a very powerful talk. While Billy Graham was speaking, Carter noticed that the truck driver was quite nervous as his time to speak got closer. The truck driver leaned over to President Carter and said that he had never given a speech before and wasn't really certain that he could even do it. Billy Graham finished his remarks and the truck driver pulled himself together and walked to the podium. He stood there silently for a moment and then reached for a glass of water. He then began to speak, mumbling into the microphone. The truck driver said, I was always drunk and didn't have any friends. The only people I knew were men like me who hung around bars in the town where I lived. He then went on to tell how someone told him about Jesus. One thing led to another and he became a Christian. His life began to be transformed and he got very excited about the possibilities. He wanted to share his faith with others, but he really didn't know how to go about it. He had always spent a lot of time in bars, and he was very comfortable there. So he went to one of the bars that he had frequented and began to share the good news of Jesus Christ and what Jesus had done in his life. As you can imagine, the bartender tried to stop him and told him that he was talking with these men and it was bad for business. But the truck driver refused to stop. His old drinking friends hardly knew what to think. 
Some of them began to talk with him and ask questions. The truck driver said, At first they treated me like a joke, but I kept up with the questions, and when I couldn't answer one, I went and got the answer and came back with it. The truck driver concluded his speech by saying, Fourteen of my friends became Christians. Jimmy Carter wrote, The truck driver's speech, of course, was the highlight of the convention. <laughs> I don't believe anyone who was there will ever forget that five-minute stumbling statement or even remember what I or Billy Graham had to say. John the Baptist was sent to be a witness to the light. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. We can testify to Jesus as the light of the world when we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbors as ourselves. We can testify to Jesus when we respect the dignity of every human being, remembering that they too are made in the image and likeness of God. We can invite people to join us for worship, Bible study, morning prayer, and any of the offerings here at St. George's. As we approach the celebration of the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, what better opportunity to invite people to join you for worship? We are called to do what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. In Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, we heard, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. What great advice! Rejoice always. Paul goes on to say, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will make you holy. And we know, with God, that all things are possible. And for this, we can give thanks in all circumstances. John, our martyr, our witness, John's baptism was with water for repentance to prepare people to receive Jesus when he arrived. Our baptism prepares us to make to be a part of Jesus' body, the church, and begins the process of preparing our lives for when he comes again in power and in great glory. And now we rejoice as Olivia receives the sacrament of baptism. And now if the baptismal party will meet us at the font. <laughs> 